Now today we're doing a video on lentils. This is a steel lentil right there. We put them above these 14 foot garage doors. And that's the other size of the lentil right there. I'm gonna show you how we put it in. The second part of the video will be how I put these lentils in above this door right here on a 12 inch wall. So here we go. Hurry up boys, we got other customers waiting. Let's get this steel out. We're gonna look at these beams. These beams are going right over the, the top of those uh, garage doors. And they want still beams. A lot of overkill, but that's what they want. So we're gonna put them on. And what we did was got an eight inch I beam here, and welded a flange, and the brickwork's gonna stay here. Now they're gonna paint this. So uh, that's our I beam. Now we're painting it. <laughs> and we're gonna put a little primer on this. <laughs> Here's what's going on. We gotta put those beams up in here. These are a little bit high. We need 14 feet exact. We already cut that one right there. And then they're gonna get some cement dog and level it out. And we're gonna put the beams in. But to get this, we're just gonna cut it like this. So we finish sawing. Get it at the right height, just like that. Now I got this, got a couple of niches in it, so I'm gonna get myself some fast drying cement doll just to straighten it out. So then I got this uh, cement doll, gotta make sure that that is perfectly level, going all the way around, all the way around when I lay that beam. See that? I want that perfect. Now I got my cement doll on here. I got everything flat. Same thing with this one. Same thing with this one. We're gonna put our iron rods down in here and fill them solid up to the top. Filling in the hole. That's it, we're filled right in there. We got the bolts. Here's the hole right here. So all we're gonna do is because the cement is wet, see the cement wet? It's right in that wet cement, just like that. That's gonna hold that in there. Alright, I want to show everybody what's going on. We put our steel beam on, right? So what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a row of caps go across like this. This is a piece of insulation, you can imagine. And the brick right here is going to go on the outside. Now right down here against the beam, we don't want to put some in against that because these beams, they expand and they contract with the heat. So what I do is I get a little bit of uh, insulation, just like if you're building a fireplace. I put it against that beam so when I'm putting the cement on, it doesn't touch it. Now I don't care about putting it on top of the beam because it's gonna slide back and forth. But when you get to the ends of the beams, that what's, that's what makes everything crack. We don't want anything to crack. Well, I got my insulation against that. I'm gonna lay my cap right like that. I don't want to touch that bolt either. That bolt will hold on to that cap. I'll add another one for good measure. What I do is I get a little more insulation, shove it in there like that. Like that. So I want no cement touching that beam. We are now on top of the building and I took the three inch caps right here and I laid them all out dry 
right till the other end because uh, I wanted to reach this bond here in the middle which I came close I'll explain that that's on block laying number four but that's what I do and now I'm gonna put them in here's my three inch cap right there here's the bolt see the bolt I don't want to touch in that bolt the concrete's gonna slide across here I'm not worried about that I just don't want to touch in that bolt touching that bolt. Now in the middle I don't care, but uh, let me get it right down in there. Right there. That's my first block. Alright, I'm starting to put my 12 inch block on. You see? And what I did was I laid all my caps right here. See I'm putting the insulation around the bottom of the bolt. Up here it don't matter. That beam, that beam's gonna move back and forth. Not much, very little. But you can see I put the insulation all, all around here. But that cement's not gonna touch that beam. And then that beam could expand and contract. Hopefully, will not crack the concrete. Okay, now we laid our block over our beam. See the beam down there is laying right on top of the beam. Over here, you see our brick ledge. That's the brick ledge right here. And we just laid it out. Now we're going to put our caps on top. And I'm just uh, continuing on. With my cap stones. Gotta split them for to get your anchor bolts in. Okay, I'm pretty much done with it. I just want to show you. That is where styrofoam's gonna go, and that's our brick ledge. Our brick is gonna overhang a little bit right like that. So that's how with the intensity built this with. Right down here, that's the way the top is. You see, that's the way the bottom is. Now I'm gonna put my uh, I'm gonna put my lentils across. So I gotta fill this solid, and I gotta fill this solid, and then we're gonna put our lentils across. It. They're all filled. This is movable. I did that for a reason. We have our lentils laid. What's really important is how level underneath it is. So that's a big deal. Filling in the side of it. Wherever it goes. I'm putting some dura wall right here to go over the top of it, and I'm gonna run my course right over it.
right over the top I go. I'm going to make a couple comments about working with steel and masonry. Years and years ago, they used to build all these castles and these big churches, and there was no steel inside them. So you would never see an expansion joint. You go look in Europe at those old castles, there's no expansion joints in them. If you go in Scranton, you look at those old brick buildings, there's no expansion joints in them. But when you get steel involved, steel, it expands and it contracts faster than the masonry. That's when you usually get your cracks. So when I start building all these uh, skyscrapers, which I kind of worked on out in Jersey, uh, we'd have our steel, we'd butt the masonry up against it, and then they would cock it. Uh, but when the steel is inside the masonry, like the lentils at the, on part two, it expands and contracts at the same time because it's inside the masonry. This is a piece of, uh, of uh, rebar that I pulled out of a footer, and it rots away. So, uh, really, steel isn't always the perfect thing. I see a lot of old buildings where they didn't have steel, and they would use oak, a big oak beam, and they'd put the masonry on top of it. They've been there for a few hundred years. I don't see nothing wrong with that. So when you're building with this kind of stuff, it's a lot of common sense, but you have to go to what the specs say and what they want you to do, and that's what you do. But you just have to realize, if you make a fireplace, it has uh, inside the damper. Well, when that damper gets hot, it expands. You always have to put, what I do is put fiberglass insulation around it. Anymore, they're building everything out of stainless steel and then covering it. But uh, masonry's changing. And what you just see me do with the steel beam is more of an old school technique. Everything anymore is getting pre-made. Uh, they actually lay it down on the ground, they pour it with the concrete truck, and they stand it up. That's the way things are going. So I hope, I hope you pick something up off this video, and uh, I know there's a million different building techniques, and people from all over the world do it a different way, and it works. So it's all basically common sense, so uh, thanks for watching.